Hello there. You. <laughs> Would you like to come to a party with me? <laughs> I know you don't know who I am, but wouldn't you like to? You know, out of all the hundreds, maybe thousands of people in this big, huge old apartment building, I called you. Come on, take a chance. <laughs> it's a fun party. <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Fun Party. So, so this... It, this is the police station. Don't tell me you've never been in one before, buddy. But that little habit of yours, you've been in plenty. Oh, Lieutenant Myers, I'm Halloran. I'm a guard over at the Park City, the big housing development. I'm bringing this man in on a tenant's complaint. Here's my ID papers. All right, Halloran. Now, what about him? A lieutenant, please, let he me... He was loitering in the halls. He was listening at doors. Me peeping, Tom? Oh, well, not exactly. N not at all. Lieutenant, if you'll only let me give you... A, you can give me your name and address, mister. I'm Carl Wyatt. I, I, I live in Park City, building GH, wing 7 of... Or is it 7B? Uh, section H2, fifth floor apartment 505. <laughs> is he kidding? No, that's where he lives. Your age, mister? Uh, 38. Hair color, gray. No, it's sandy blonde. Eyes, gray. No, they're blue. What? Must be the bad light in here. It's not the light, Lieutenant. It's me. Nobody really sees me. Well, somebody saw you trying doors or whatever you were doing. Please, you you got to believe me. I, I, I wasn't doing anything illegal. I've never done any... Hello, 119th Precinct. Yeah, talk slower, please. Can you give me a description? Uh, get that one, Sergeant. Go ahead, go ahead. 119th Precinct. What? Get that, someone. Yeah, I'm listening, ma'am. He was what? Was he armed? No. Uh, Halloran... Uh, uh, take what's his name in the back room. I'll book him as soon as I can. Lieutenant, I can't hang around here. I got my job. Yeah, and I got a crime wave or something. You brought him in. You stay with him. I'll buzz for you when I'm ready. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. I have I have all the information. What's your address? That's too bad, Mr. Halloran. I, I mean, I'm sorry. You have to stay. You're sorry. Yes, I am, because it's all a mistake. What mistake? How would you like a woman to call you in the middle of the night? Eddie... Go look in the dark halls. There's something, uh, something, mind you. Not even somebody. Something is cat-footing around, breathing and listening at doors. She's scared, she says. She's scared. So I go. I hate to tell you what it did to my blood pressure. And I grab you. And now you tell me it's all a mistake. It is. I, I am not a burglar. I am not a peeping Tom. Tell it to the lieutenant. Tell it to the housing committee. Housing committee? They let you in a park city and they'll boot you out. You broke a rule. Out. No, no, no. They, they mustn't do that. I, I can't leave. I won't leave. Hey, I... buddy, I'd worry more about my job if I were you. What's your boss going to say about this? I hate my boss. Now, who doesn't? What about your friends, your social life? <laughs> I'm sorry for you, bud. I know I brought you in, but that's my job. And now you're in a spot. The least you'll get out of this is your name in the papers as an arrest. There goes your job. There goes most of your friends. I'll bet there goes your apartment in Park City. No, no. I, I, I don't care about anything else as long as I can stay in Park City. Oh, no, I'm really sorry for you. You're off base. Eddie, you... Mr. Halloran? Eddie's okay. Eddie, can I tell you what happened to me? A month ago... I was sitting in my apartment reading the only magazine I really like. A liked. girly book. Oh, no, no. I like to read about travel, sports cars, parties on yachts in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Just where is your yacht anchored, mister? Uh, my, my name is Carl. Yeah. And you don't have to be a millionaire to lead that kind of life. You, you'd be surprised. There are people without fortunes in it, but they have other things. Mm -hmm. They have youth beauty, talent, ac accomplishment. 
That's the key to get in everywhere, even with the millionaires. I call them... I call them golden people. Would, would you like to hear a dream I have about them? Yeah. I, I dream I suddenly decide to take a, a jet to Rome. I have the money in my pocket. Well, you can tell that's a dream. I, I arrive at the cocktail hour, but I'm not alone like any ordinary tourist in a strange town. I have a whole address book full of first-name friends, actresses, publishers, scientists, adventurers. I call them. We organize an all-night party, and we live. We live in Technicolor. I, I used to think, even if I did get to meet them, what good would it be? I'm a face you forget. The, the, the lieutenant couldn't tell what I looked like when I was standing right in front of him. I'm, I'm an undeveloped personality. I'm, I'm, I'm a blur of what I should be. I'm nothing. I know it. I've always known it. And how do you think it makes me feel? Ah, you're making too much of it. To me, you seem like a decent guy. Yeah, I, I could be more. I, I, I could be one of those talented, confident, golden people I was telling you about. Listen, a month ago, a month ago, I was sitting in my apartment reading the magazine I told you about. It's called Sport and Travel. I didn't realize it was my turn. Uh, hello? Am I speaking to the nice man in 505? Uh, th th this is Carl Wyatt. Oh, my name is Suzanne. You might call me a neighbor. Um, look, some of my friends are having a party. This little fun thing, and we'd like you to join us. Well, I'm, I'm, you must have the wrong apartment, 505. There, there are others in, in the other buildings. I'm sure it's the right one. It... But, but you, you you don't know me. I do now. Oh, come on, Carl. Take a chance. I'll see you in five minutes. Bye. Five minutes? For five minutes? Oh, I can't wear this dirty. Wear a new blue shirt? Oh, no. Slacks? No, no. Too casual, maybe. Oh, I need a shave. I need a shave. Maybe this powder will hide it. No time to... Hello. I should have warned you. I'm one woman who's on time. That's too bad. I, I, it would have been a pleasure to wait for you. Oh, thank you. You're quite well. Oh, c come in, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. uh, don't bother looking around. It's just... It's just a little... It's just a little pied terre in town. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, I see you read sport and travel, too. You know, the publisher is a perfect bear. He chews up a secretary every two or three months and leaves the bones to the psychoanalysts. <laughs> and the pulp to his readers. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Oh, Carl, I wish we'd known before that you lived here. We? The gang, the tribe, the set, the inner circle. Darling, you give us a name. I could only call you the beautiful people. Oh, but you haven't seen us yet. I've seen you. <laughs> and I saw you first. Remember that when you meet the other girls. Shall we go? I gotta criticize your story. It, it's too much like a dream. A girl you never heard of comes up to take you to a party and she isn't a letdown. She isn't anxious with a built like a truck. Come on, Carl. Eddie, Eddie, she, she was perfect and, and, and beautiful. And somehow that, that, that didn't freeze me the way it usually would. I, I said all the right things, the, the magazine things. Why, I, I had dialogue like, like Cary Grant. One line after another, just like that. Oh, I, I, I could never do it again. Only that night. So, uh, where was the party? Somewhere, somewhere in Park City. I, I, I didn't notice the building. I, I was floating on a cloud. 
You, you know how ugly Park City is. Miles of halls, acres of buildings, all alike. Ugly gray paint. The feeling of, of, of being in a big ad hill. Just another Yeah, yeah, ad. that's what I said before. And you're so crazy to stay there. But that night, that night it was beautiful. The halls glowed. We went up, down, in, out. I, I could have walked with Suzanne forever. Well, finally... We stopped at an apartment door. Yeah, what else could you stop at? Oh, uh, this, this one was different. The number was covered by a cocktail flag. The kind people use on fancy yachts. Suzanne rang the doorbell a special way. The door was opened, and we went in. And there they were. My golden people. The sport and travel people. We cast our lines, we fished, and this time we caught a whale. <laughs> Here's Carl. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Carl. It is not often we are so lucky. The idea of calling a stranger and hoping to meet a friend is excellent in theory, but in practice... Many are called, but few are chosen. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, you look like a man of sense and discrimination, Carl, mon ami. Shall we exchange a few ideas in French? Uh, it would be an unfair exchange. You speak with the tongue of Moliere and Napoleon. I speak with the tongue of Miss Schultz, my high school French teacher. She had no gift for language. But to shake up. Oh, Marcel, haven't I said, be patient. Someday we will find another one of us. Well, tonight here he is. Oh, come, Carl, I want you to meet the others. I'd be delighted. I want you to meet Philip. He's an archaeologist. The first man to enter an Egyptian pharaoh's tomb and escape the curse of Hathor. At least he's escaped it up till now. Hi, Philip. <laughs> oh, and that's Bettina. She's a model, and I wouldn't trust her with you for a moment. Darling, you're so naughty. <laughs> oh, this man behind the mustache is Major Brian Llewellyn Ford. Hello there. Delighted, Major. Uh, he's in charge of something terribly secret. And this is Tamara. She's Don't really... Don't tell me anything about her. Having a name like Tamara is a full-time career. Oh, Suzanne, I want him. Oh, hands off, darling. Oh, now, there in the corner, that's Captain Cutler. The captain runs a trading schooner in the Celebes. Oh, by the way, just where are the Celebes? In my encyclopedia on page 219. <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs> oh, people, people, there are too many of you to meet and remember now. Just give Carl a big smile and you'll see him later. <laughs> oh, Tamara, get Carl something from the buffet, please. I'd love to give him anything he wants. Oh, but just hand it to him, dear. Don't linger. I'll be back, Carl. Don't run away. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, darling, drop a fresh peach into that champagne and let it... Wow, and double wow. A party like that in Park City? Oh, they, they, they throw a lot of them. You sound like something went wrong. It did. I did. I, I reverted to type. The, the evening kept getting more wonderful. Then Bettina, she was the model, developed a headache. And nobody else paid attention to it, but I had to do something. I looked all over the apartment for some aspirin. Of course, there, there weren't any. The golden people never take aspirin. That's just for the rest of us. But I, I had to do something. I had to justify my... Oh, forget <laughs> Bettina's headache. She'll drink more champagne and not even notice it. Come dance with me. But she looks so pale. <laughs> oh, there's always rouge. Firstly, come on me. I find her paleness becoming. Well, if you will not dance with Suzanne, come listen to Major Four. Did you know that he lived three years in Castro's Cuba, disguised as a bearded lady? Oh, oh, utterly charming. Oh, Carl, darling, I'm getting jealous of Bettina. I want you to concentrate on me. And I will, Suzanne. But there's a drugstore in the shopping plaza open all night. I could run down there and pick up some aspirin. I'm sure it's not necessary. Suzanne... I want to do something for you. For me? Or for Bettina? For all of you. But I can help Bettina now because she's in pain. I'll be back before you miss me. Oh, impossible, Carl. Hurry back. Hurry back, darling. Hurry back. Hurry back. That's what they said. Hurry back. And I did hurry. But it was no good. I couldn't find the apartment again. Why not? You know, the size of Park City, acres of buildings, miles of sections, wings, halls, all alike. 
Why didn't I remember to ask where I was? Did you go home and wait for them to call you again? Of course, but they... Why should they give me another chance? They think I ran out on them. Eddie, I, I left the real me with them in that apartment. I left the person I always knew I could be if I, if I only had the right chance. That, that night was my right chance. Oh, you should have seen me and heard me. Well, take it easy, Carl. I can't. I can't. Not until I find them again. Now that I know what I could be, I can't go back to what I was. Look, if you don't remember the building and didn't see the number of the apartment and don't know any of the people's last names, how are you going to find them? What do you think I was doing in the halls when you found me? I was walking and listening. I did it night after night, hearing the conversations and the running water and the crying babies. But I wasn't interested. I, I wasn't listening. I know those people's lives, and I, I don't want them. I was listening for the other, the party sounds. Well, how do you know they're having another party? They have them all the time. Any hour, spur of the moment, fun stuff. Listen, Eddie, you know how thin the walls are in Park City and how far the sound carries. If, if I could hear the daily little noises of the people all around me so well, don't you think I'd be able to hear a party from a long way off? Yeah, but you can... No, well, they're ready for us at the desk. We better go. Eddie, what, 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 what are you going to say about me? If the police book you, if the House Committee kicked you out of your apartment in Park City, would it matter so much? Oh, dear Lord. Well, you got along before. You got along for 38 years. I, I was half dead and didn't know it, but I, I know it now. So if it happened, what would you do? Oh, what's the difference? I, nothing would matter then. I... I don't care about jail. I don't care if I lose my job. I have only one thing to care about. Staying in Park City until I find my golden people again. Eddie, would it sound too melodramatic if I said my life was in your hands? <sighs> I already figured that. But you got to realize my position, Carl. I have a job. I was doing it when I brought you in on a complaint. I could lose my job, too. Okay, Eddie, forget it. Um, this is true, what you've been telling me. You swear you didn't dream it. It's the realest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Yeah. I'd like to help you, Carl, but I... Thanks, Eddie. Thanks for listening. Tell, tell the police anything you want to. You don't owe me anything. You, you don't even know me. In the funny way, I do. Okay, Halloran, you can bring that guy in now. All right, Lieutenant. All right. I mean, all right for you too, Carl. I'll square the rap for you. But, but Eddie, what, what will you say? You just shut up. I'll think of something. Maybe I'll tell him they withdrew the complaint. Well, you'd be taking an awful chance. Well, somebody's got to look after a screwball like you. Imagine a grown man telling a story like that about a place like Park City. They'd suspect you of all kinds of crazy things. Now, look. I know I, uh... I can't keep you from, uh, haunting those halls at night, but... For gosh sakes, promise me one thing. That you'll be careful... Oh, and uh, if you ever do find that uh, crazy party and those uh, golden people of yours, maybe, just maybe ask him if I can tend bar or something. <laughs> Theater 5 has presented The Fun Party, written by Phyllis Cole and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, George Petrie, Gil Mack, Bryna Rayburn, Cliff Carpenter, and Connie Lemke. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. 
Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. 